What's up everybody? My name's Scott. You know me as MTB Plan B and today I'm actually on the webcam because I'm going to share with you something very exciting which is I am in the planning phases of building a new bike and I'm, I've decided that I'm going to build this bike from the frame up and that's typically how I like to build my bikes because I can choose the components that I want to go on the bike. So I've got two objectives for this video really is number one, make sure I have all the parts when it comes to build day and number two, make sure I have all the correct parts when it comes to build day. There is nothing more disappointing than getting to build day um, thinking about getting all the components on the bike and then taking it out for its maiden voyage and you can't because either you didn't get the correct part or you don't have a part and we know that it can take days to actually source a part if, you've got, if you have to order it from the internet or even if you have to go to a local bike store to get it it could be on a Sunday or a Monday and most bike stores are closed on those days so um, hopefully this video will help you avoid some of those pitfalls. Okay, so here's what I really do when I start planning. First, I build a list, build a list of all the different components that actually go on a bike. And this is a pretty easy process because you can navigate to any manufacturer's uh, website and they will allow you to build a bike. You can see here is a 2018 Santa Cruz 5010. It has all the various build kit specs under here. Uh, I'm, I've decided that I'm going to stick with alumin, aluminum again, and if I do show full specs here, you can see that um, down the left-hand side here, there is a list of all the different components that go onto a bicycle, and uh, it really outlines what types of components that they put on their particular builds. So. I'm going to go with a frame build, so I'll get the frame shipped to me and I'm, I will source all the components myself. So here's an example of a list I actually created. I used Excel here. I know this, it can get overly complex and, and detailed when you use some of these tools, but um, I dabble in Excel a lot of the times during the day. So it's easy to make a list here and easy to actually build uh, some functions in that can calculate the price and the total. Um, amount of money that you will spend building the bike and that can kind of help you prepare your budget. Um, so you can see that down the left hand side here I've listed out all the different components of the bike that I will actually need to have in order to have a successful build and in column two here I've actually got a, a drop down box for um, either purchase or have and reuse and so uh, what I do is for each one of these components, I look at my existing bike um, that I could uh, actually reuse components from or look in my stash of bike components that I may want to use. And for each one of those, I just kind of mark them that uh, I don't need to purchase these. These are not going to be part of the budget. I already have them. And so once you do that in this column, and you go search on various internet searches. Um, you can go find the price of just about anything and you can go find the cheapest thing that you can source at least from the internet. And um, they will give you all the pricing so you can at least get an idea. Now I'm not saying this is what I paid for these components, but at least you can get a ballpark idea about what your budget will be for that particular build. And so I've gone through and listed out for each item that I need to purchase, what the type and the size is, and what the price, at least a price that I see on the internet. And that gives me a ballpark roundabout idea about how much I need to budget to actually buy the frame plus the components. So now, one thing I will uh, say here, um, I've built a few bikes now and I can almost say without a doubt it's cheaper to buy the manufacturer's build because they have some economies of scale built in and so they buy uh, in volume and bulk and discount from the component manufacturers and they can translate those savings back to the end consumer. Now if you if for example, I go out and source these components. I may or may not be able to get that discount. And so I have to go and probably pay, 
pay close to MSRP for a lot of these different components. Um, and I'll, I'll just give you an example here. So if we look at uh, the frame here is $18.99 from, uh, this is a Santa Cruz 5010 2.1 aluminum frame. It's $1,899 and the rest of this actual $5,580 is actually components. So you can see components can be quite expensive uh, sourcing, sourcing them this way. Um, but the flexibility here is that you get to choose which components you want on the bike. Now, I will also say there's a couple different options I've done in the past that, may or, that you may or may not be able to use. For example, I could go out and build a, I could go out and purchase a full build from a manufacturer and then remove the parts that I did not want and actually go sell those parts and recuperate some of my or recoup some of the cost right so there's a there's a few different options um, that you have at your fingertips here that you can actually use okay so having a list will get you prepared to have all of the parts which was the number one objective the number two objective is to make sure you have all of the right parts because you can definitely order the wrong parts and bikes uh, mountain bikes in general have a ton of different specifications unique things about specific manufacturers and you have to be aware of that or you'll fall into a trap where uh, you make an assumption and come build day things don't fit and that's just not good so um, hopefully what I'll show you now is a little bit about how to select the right size and type of component for your bike and that starts with actually scrubbing the manufacturer's website. You can get a lot of information from that website that can help you determine what size and type of component you need to purchase for your bike. So let's start by looking at, uh, most manufacturers have a bike archive and you can go back in time and actually look at uh, specific bikes that have been manufactured throughout the years and um, my bike is a 2015 5010 it's one of the v the version one model so i'm going to click on this bike ar archive here and that will bring up a um, so you can see here from 2013 to 2015 it's a version one so i will click on that and you can get a lot of different information about your current bike and then you can use that information to see if uh, parts off of your current bike will actually fit on your new bike. Um, I know for a fact the new bike is a boost frame, so I won't be able to reuse uh, the hubs and I won't be able to reuse, I'm going to a one by 12 drivetrain, so that's gonna be new. So there are a lot of different things you have to kind of take into consideration here when, when moving to a new frame, especially when the frame spacing changes um, as it is here. But as you go through this, um, you can definitely see um, a lot of information about what the replacement parts are, uh, what the shock specs are, and then you can look at the new uh, bike and see if they are equivalent or if they have changed. You can also get the uh, max rotor size, um, what the br uh, bottom bracket uh, with this, um, what type of der derailleur mounts, what the seat post clamp size is, a lot of different information, right? And you can see compatible forks, uh, 120 millimeter to 140 millimeter travel, 150 mil millimeter travel max for the front fork. Um, you can see the headset type. This is a tapered um, 44 millimeter. It's called a ZS, a zero stack for the upper cup, and it has an external cup for the bottom. Um, and you can see the, the SHIS name for that particular component here. These are very important because um, although I won't be reusing the headset anyhow or even trying to reuse this because I want to keep this bike going, um, these things change and, and I'll show you an example. So keep this in mind. This has a uh, integrated uh, or a zero stack upper headset and it has a external cup or EC uh, bottom. Now if we go to the new 5010 and we look at the specs on uh, the aluminum model, 
Um, a lot of times you can go down to the bottom here and there'll be some type of question and um, you have to pay very particular attention to what you're ordering here because this only applies to the aluminum version and I guarantee you the headset is not the same for the carbon version. Uh, if we look here, this is a uh, integrated stack, right? 41 for the upper and a integrated stack 52 for the lower. Uh, so a totally different headset anyhow. So even if I wanted to remove the headset on my old bike, it would not fit this bike. The other, if we go look at the headset for a carbon build here, we'll click here um, and go down to headset. You can see that the carbon frames, you still use a zero stack headset. And we just saw that the aluminum build, if we click on that, uses an integrated stack. So they're totally different. Same bike, one's carbon, one's aluminum. So you have to pay particular attention to that. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong headset and you won't be able to complete your build on time. Okay, so once you've actually made a decision on the frame and the components that you actually need to source versus reuse, uh, then you can start looking at how you can kind of recoup some of the cost of the bike, and you can usually do that by selling parts. Um, for example, a frame, if we look at um, the 5010 frame, if you order a frame, it will come with a rear shock, right? So you get the frame and the rear shock. And I'm gonna use a different rear shock. I'm gonna use the, the X2 uh, Fox with Kashima coating. And so I can take then this shock and actually sell it. It will be a new shock. And so it has some value on the market, uh, in the used market. And you know, usually these mid uh, range components have a good kind of resale value and there is quite a bit of interest, at least in my area there is, it may differ in your area. So you can use all your favorite places to go um, recoup some of the cost by selling some of the parts that you're not gonna use from the bike. And then you can look at your existing bike and see if there's anything that you can pull off of that and sell as well. Um, so you have uh, this, uh, this mechanism to, to really uh, get the components on the bike that you want and um, recover some of the cost of the existing components and you can use your favorite uh, places to do that. Um, I like to start out with local places. Um, for example, our uh, um, forums here for Triangle MTB, um, we have a bike parts and accessories for sale, uh, bikes and frames for sale, and those are good places. Those are serious riders, and they're, they're usually looking for some mid to high range components uh, at a good price, and you can, you can sell uh, fairly fast on those forums. You can also use things like Facebook Marketplace. Uh, your local Craigslist will actually work as well. And uh, if you want to broaden your scope, you can use the Pink Bike Buy Sell um, uh, forums here and uh, sell your parts and, and frames or full bikes there as well. And this is just episode one of this build and it's the planning phase. Uh, episode two, we will actually start building the bike, so stay tuned. Um, until next time, skill up and ride.